Good afternoon all. My name is Timo Hirvonen. I work as senior researcher for a company called F-Secure. Um, F-Secure is based in Finland. We've been doing information security for 25 years. Um, I'm guessing most of you don't speak any Finnish, and I don't speak any Spanish or Portuguese, so let's make a compromise and I'll do this presentation in English. I have two goals for my presentation today. First one is that I'm hoping I'm able to convince you that malicious flash redirectors are a threat worth fighting against. You can significantly improve the protection of your users if you put a little bit more focus on fighting malicious flash redirectors. The second goal is to give you a really brief introduction to the tools and processes that can be used to analyze malicious flash files. Um, if you have the right tools, um, you can, you can analyze many of the most simple malicious flash redirectors. With the right tools, you can, you can do a lot already. So those are the two goals for this presentation. And I promise you, I won't be doing death by PowerPoint today. At least that's not my goal. And to keep my promise, I have two live demos. I'll be doing live analysis of two different flash files. Okay, let's get started. Today I'm planning to put some myths to test. I'm going to be testing some myths, busting some of them, and confirming some of them. And the first myth that I have chosen is that flash redirectors are rare. You don't see them really that often. And focusing on them doesn't make sense because even if you're able to detect them, there's no real impact. That's the first myth. And to test this myth, I'm going to start with my first live analysis. Here I have a malicious flash file. And I'll start by trying to decompile the flash file. This is the way I typically start the analysis. Um, this is my favorite tool for decompiling flash files, AS3 Sorcerer. Um, this is not free, this is about 20 US dollars, so it's, it's pretty cheap. Um, if you don't catch all the names of the tools that I use, don't worry, those are all listed in the slides, so you can uh, get back to those later. So I'll just drag and drop the flash file to the decompiler. And as you can see, the decompilation is successful. The nice thing is that if the decompiler works, you're able to get um, more or less the original ActionScript source code of the flash file. And ActionScript as a language, as you can see, is pretty close to, let's say, JavaScript. So if you're successfully able to decompile it, analyzing, in some cases, can be really simple. And I'll, I'll show you just that. The beef, the most interesting part, is here. First, there's a simple method call that gets the user agent string, and then that user agent string is passed as a parameter for the function is our user agent, which simply checks does the um, user agent match what the malware authors want to see. So they want to perform the redirection only with certain browsers. So let's check how this user agent check is implemented. We have the code right here. So the parameter is the user agent string, and then there is a simple check. It search searches for a substring, and we get the substring by decrypting the hex string you can see there. And it's that UN3 function that performs the decryption. So let's see how the decryption is implemented. Um, the decryption routine is more or less the most simple you can have. So it takes two characters from the hex string, uh, treats that as a hex integer, converts that to integer, and then XORs it with key, hex key FF, and then converts that back to ASCII. So the most simple XOR encryption that you possibly can have. And for performing um, decryption tasks like this, um, 
my favorite tool at the moment is Converter. This is created by Kahoo Security, a really nice tool. I'll show you what you can do with it. So I'll copy the hex string, then I'll convert the hex to text, and you can see the conversion there. So that's, that's binary, that's why it doesn't make any sense, and it's encrypted. I'll copy the output to input and select tools, and this is where the magic happens, key search slash convert. Mm, excuse me. Okay. Now we have the conversion tool, and all I need to do is select hex and type the key, which was FF, and then we can decrypt. So hex, key is FF, and convert, and there we have the decrypted string. As I mentioned, the encryption routine is really simple, but yeah, I think this is a handy tool for decryption tasks like this. Of course, you have the option of using, let's say, Python or writing some small script, but in many cases, this is much more simple. And in the flash file, if we get back there, we can see that there is also another hex string, and that's um, the encrypted version of the string Opera. So the flash file is checking, is the user using either Internet Explorer or Opera? And if he or she is, then the redirection is performed. And the redirection happens in this method called, method named ex. And again, there's, a, there's this long hex string as a parameter. That hex string uses the same, same encryption routine that you just saw. And the actual redirection happens here. The most important thing for future analysis purposes to learn from this demo is, is this method call, um, external interface call. With this action script method, you can execute JavaScript in the browser. So with, uh, this method call takes just one parameter, which is the JavaScript string, and then that string of JavaScript is executed in the context of the browser. So with this method call, you can inject JavaScript from a flash file to a web page. And as I already mentioned, the piece of JavaScript is encrypted, but I have already decrypted it. I'll show it to you. Um, this is what gets injected. Um, here you can see a new iframe is created. The width is zero. The height is also zero. So it's a zero by zero iframe, practically invisible. And finally, the holy grail the target of the redirection. That's the URL where the user will get redirected. And behind that URL is an instance of Styx exploit kit, which means that if a user who has any vulnerable component on his or her system, let's say um, an outdated browser or an outdated browser plugin, they will get infected just because of the redirection. Once the browser opens that URL, the exploit kit will check all the version numbers of the plugins and the browser, and if any of those is vulnerable, they will exploit the vulnerability and infect the system with malware. So, yeah, all the vulnerable users will get infected. Um, that's serious already as it is, but what makes this even more serious is the source of the sample. I didn't mention that yet. YouTube. This is a real flash file from YouTube. A real malicious flash advertisement on YouTube. Imagine the number of people that visit YouTube every day. And all those users who loaded that advertisement, I mean, they, they didn't even have to click on it or anything. All the users whose browser loaded that advertisement, and if the user was using Internet Explorer or Opera, they were redirected to that exploit kit, and most likely they got infected. What makes this even more challenging is that um, this problem cannot be solved by education. Like you all know, we have some problems in information security that we can solve by education, but this isn't one of those. It's perfectly okay to vi visit YouTube. There's nothing wrong in that. The user didn't do anything stupid. But 
If any of the software component components were vulnerable, the system got infected. And this is exactly the type of problem that we need to be able to solve with technical solutions. Education doesn't help much in this case. We need to be able, as an industry, to solve this with technical solutions. And this wasn't even the first time this happened. Um, a couple of weeks before the YouTube case, um, a similar flash file was found on Hasbro.com website. Hasbro is the leading toy and game distributor in the US. And again, that flash file redirected the users to Styx exploit kit. Now, some of you may be wondering that how serious is this? And how serious are these exploit kits? Well, in my opinion, the problem is pretty serious. Exploit kits are the number one infection vector. That's by far the most common way of users getting infected nowadays. But don't take my word for it. Here's a report by European Network and Information Security Agency. They list all the top threats in priority order. Guess what's number one? Drive-by exploits. So I think it's safe to say that the industry agrees that this is our number one problem at the moment when we are talking about malware infections. This is the primary source of malware infections. But like you probably know, there's, there's many different ways you can um, land on an exploit kit site. And flash redirectors is just one of them. For example, you could link on a malicious link in a spam email. But I would still argue that focusing on the flash redirectors makes sense. And here's the reason. This is real telemetry, real statistics from our own, own systems. Don't worry if you don't see the details. Those are not relevant. The upper graph is statistics of exploit kits how many exploit kit instances we have seen. And the graph below is from the same time period, but this graph is about flash redirector detections, detected and prevented uh, flash redirections. And like you can see, when the flash redirector detections peak, the number of exploit kit hits go down. And the same thing here, a smaller peak but still, the number of exploit kit victims go down. Which brings us back to the original myth. Flash redirectors are rare, and detecting them has no real impact. Well, I think it's safe to say that this one is busted. Myth number two. Surfing adult websites increases the chances of malware infection. How many of you think this is true? There's a couple of hands. How many of you think this is false? This is not true. OK. Let's see. Here is the data from our systems again. Top 10 referrer domains for malicious flash redirectors. And the ones highlighted in red are adult websites. So the biggest chunk over there, that's an adult website. The third biggest, also an adult website. So more than half of these flash redirectors were found on porn sites. So yeah, I think it's safe to say that surfing adult websites does increase your chances of infection. Myth number three, one of my favorite myths. Antivirus is dead and cannot provide any proactive protection. I've heard this quite many times. People feel that um, if the antivirus company hasn't seen the file before, they, there's nothing they can do. Antivirus companies are working in this reactive mode. They have to see something first before they can react to it. Well, let's see. Live demo number two. I have the file here, and like I mentioned, I typically start with the AS3 saucer. And this is what I get. Flash file doesn't contain any ActionScript 3 scripts. So there's two versions of ActionScript 2 and 3. 
and <laughs> one obviously as well. Um, this tool supports only version 3, so it's, it's natural that it wasn't able to process this file. Okay, no biggie. Um, for these cases, I, I use another tool. This is Swift Scan by HP. This is a free tool, also a Flash decompiler, and this supports both versions 2 and 3. So let's try with this one. I'll open the same Flash file. Decompile operation failed. Um, now is a good time to get desperate. If the decompilation fails, it means that um, you're not able to get the, the action script source code. You're not able to get the stuff that looks like JavaScript. And if you're not able to get that, it means you need to do the analysis on a lower abstraction level, which makes the whole thing a lot more complicated or fun. It, it depends on how you look at it. So, one more tool. Adobe Swift Investigator. Free tool by Adobe, really nice. Um, one of the cool things that this can do is this tag viewer so you can see the structure of the Flash file. Sometimes the interesting um, stuff isn't in the code, it's somewhere else in the Flash file though. So this is, this is a really useful tool. Let's try with this one. Um, Okay, that's actually the wrong file. No wonder it worked. Again, an error. If we go to the disassembly tab, this is all we get. It, it wasn't able to get any code out of the file. But trust me, there, there is code. So my final hope is a tool called Swift Dump. This is a free tool also available for Linux, which is pretty nice. Um, I'll use this one to decompile the flash file. Yeah, it seems to be successful. Um, I've saved the same output to this file, and this is how it looks like. So instead of something that looks like JavaScript, you get something that looks like assembly. Much more difficult to analyze. And I have even further bad news. The file is encrypted. Not fully, but there's there's most of the file is, is encrypted. So if you want to analyze this, you need to identify the encryption algorithm, the encryption key, what's the input, then you need to re-implement the encryption algorithm, somehow extract the data from flash file, run it through your tool, and then you get the decrypted stuff. Simple. But that's, that's not a problem. That's just time consuming. The bigger challenge from an antivirus perspective is that how do you detect this file? If it's encrypted, how do you detect it? You cannot implement all the different encryption algorithms in the world. And still you would need to find the encryption key and all that. So decryption in an antivirus engine isn't an option. That's clear. That's obvious. So what do you do? Well, one thing you can do one thing I recommend you to always do is to see whether you get lucky. I will dump the action script again and grep for HTTP. I mean, if there's a redirection, there's probably HTTP somewhere. And yes, sometimes you do get lucky. That's the redirection target of this flash file. Which makes me wonder that if you manually implement XT encryption and encrypt, was it seven different strings? Why you don't encrypt the target, the URL? That's probably the most critical piece of the whole thing. Well, I don't know. We would need to ask the bad guy who wrote this. But there's still some bad news. Even if we now know the redirection target, we cannot really use that to create a detection for this flash file, because there might be other similar flash files, and the only thing that changes is the URL. So we don't, we don't have a method for detecting this file. As you can see, I'm an antivirus guy, I, I think, from the detection perspective. But with some imagination, creativity, and careful analysis, you typically find something. A string 
run. Like you know, I'm not a native English speaker, but I still know that that's not, that's not proper English. Run. That's, that's not how you write it. So what I did, I went to our collection of clean, harmless flash files, and I checked all of them. None of those contain the same string, so I created the detection. It detects all the flash files that use this string. Yeah, I know, it's, it's not scientific. It's, it's far from anything scientific. But it works. Trust me, it works. One lesson to learn here is that when you get something that's encrypted or obfuscated or packed or whatever, it's quite common to say that we don't have the technology to deal with this. Well, I say if you have a little bit of imaginations and a little bit of creativity, you can, you can do a lot of stuff. And this is the result. So I created the detection based on that one funky string, RUND. I created the detection in October 2013. And here is detection statistics from end of January, beginning of February. The detection was already half a year old at this point, and it was still detecting files. A lot of files, that's, the scale is in thousands. which brings us back to the myth. Antivirus is dead and cannot provide any proactive protection. I have many similar examples like this. I would say this myth is busted. If you feel you disagree, come and chat with me. We'll talk. One final myth, myth number four. Virus total is a great way to check which antivirus solutions detect a sample. How many of you have heard of virus total? Hands up. Quite many, that's good. Okay, so how many of you agree with this? How many of you feel this is true? A couple. How many of you feel this is false, this is not true? One, at least one. Here's my take. A typical virus total scan report, the type of scan report you see on blocks. Ah, antivirus is dead. Nobody is able to detect it. Well, how many of you know how virus total works? <laughs> the same guy who, who said that the myth, <laughs> myth is false. Yeah, that's quite interesting. <laughs> yeah, the way virus total works is that they are not using the full antivirus products or the full internet security solutions. They are using special tools provided by antivirus companies that contain only certain protection layers of the full product. So only a fraction of the protection layers that the full products have. And that's one of the reasons why you see scan reports like this. It's, it's not the complete truth. They are missing many of the protection layers that typical internet security solutions have. And to prove this to you, I have the same scan results from our own internal systems. Same file, and that's our detection. Even though the detection is not visible in virus total, yeah, we do detect it. In fact, I've heard that there might be some antivirus companies who are more interested in really protecting the users than they are in the PR. And what I mean by that is, if you hide a detection in virus total, so that it's not visible in virus total, what the bad guys do is they send their newest samples to virus total, they check do the antivirus engines detect those. If they say something like this, the bad guys think, okay, the antivirus vendors are not detecting these, we can release these. But who wins? It's actually the antivirus company who wins, because they actually do have a detection, but the bad guys don't know it. But what's the downside? The, the downside is the bad PR. The downside is all the blog posts with screenshots like this. No antivirus vendor is able to detect the file. But there might be some antivirus vendors who intentionally hide the detections in virus total, and they choose 
that it's more important to protect the users than to get good PR or avoid the bad PR that you get from blog posts like that. I've heard rumors that there might be antivirus companies that do that. So the myth, busted. The next time you see that kind of a blog post, remember this presentation and remember that the virus total scan report is not the complete truth. Okay, that's almost everything I had. These are the tools that I used in the demos. You will get the slides so you can uh, get back to this if you want to. I've also listed other useful tools. If, you, if you're interested in analyzing flash files, be it flash exploits or malicious flash redirectors. And if you're interested in the, uh, let's say, malvertisement threat landscape, this is the guy to follow on Twitter. A French guy goes by the name Malekal. Follow him and follow his blog. Any questions? Is my microphone on? If no questions, then thank you. Oh, there is a question. I don't have them. Oh, no. <laughs> wow. <laughs> my name is Stefan Lagerholm from Secure64 Software Corporation. So what is your recommendation for a service provider to help their customers with those types of threats? Obviously, they are unable to install software on each individual end node, so they would have to look for some type of network uh, protection uh, yeah. to protect against this. Um, yeah, that's, that's a really good question. It really depends on the technical capabilities. Um, if you're somehow able to see the URLs that the users access, a lot can be done just by looking at the, at the pattern of the URL. Many exploit kits can be detected based on the pattern. Then if you are able to scan the traffic, that's, that's of course even better. Then you can scan the traffic for malicious content. And what I've learned, not only with exploits and malicious flash re redirectors, but with malware in general, is that, is that the better you understand the bad guys, the closer you follow the threat landscape, the more information you have, and the more creative you can get. Sometimes you might feel that there is technical solutions preventing or technical limitations preventing you from protecting the users. But if you understand the bad guys and the threat well enough, you usually find a way around those limitations. Si alguno tiene alguna pregunta adicional, se puede acercar a los micrófonos que están en ambos lados. Bueno, agradecemos a Timo entonces por la presentación. Thank you. Thank you.